Okay. Hey, watch my kerosene automatic trick. Check this out. Wipe the machine down. Wipe myself down a little bit. See if you can see the difference. Get down here. Get all the bright work. This is an old uh, Navy uh, machinist trick, and it's also in the early Odell's machinist manuals. Wipe your machines down with kerosene. It keeps the paint looking uh, fresh and the bright work bright. So let's get the bright work. This uh, uh, 10 e has uh, most of the original paint. Uh, the paint has become brittle from uh, using coolant. And uh, it's always had uh, straight oil coolants when needed, screw machine oil, you know, no, no water soluble. And uh, I think that's pretty important on this machine, and it's critical on the hard inch machine uh, not to use water soluble because it, you get water in the apron and it rusts their little needle bearings out. I have seen it. Now, I've used most uh, tool making lathes over the years, and uh, there's quite a few of them around. I've used uh, the Harrisons, um, the Shoblin, Wheeler, and uh, oh gosh, uh, some of the antiques. And uh, out of all of them, there, there's just no comparison to uh, the Monarch. There's just not. Let's see. How's that looking? Did that bright work? Ah, ah. Okay, so they do that this in the day because everything's got to look sharp. But you should do this in your shop so your machines look great. If you have customers or you want to impress your friends and stuff like that, your machines look good, nice and sharp. All right, well, let's see. I have to look through the back of the camera here and see if you can take in the... Uh, the whole thing. Oh, yeah, there we go. See? Oh, isn't that nice? Okay, I'm going to uh, take the camera loose here. Yeah. Kind of, uh, I'm at a, <laughs> kind of at a weird spot here. And uh, talk about this machine a little bit and what the differences are. And <laughs> one of the things right off when you start using something like this is the entire thing all the controls and everything are like a micrometer it's just a it's a precision instrument and i i just don't think there's anything like it um the uh, the imports started coming in you know uh there's some shop ones and and other uh lids uh, uh, I, I think it's the 1970s and stuff, and uh, Monarch decided to just totally outclass uh, all the other machines. And uh, 
They had probably one of the best co uh, customers, the U.S. government. But the government also bought some of those other machines and they just didn't hold up or produce as good as uh, this kind of machine or particular uh, machine can. And it's, it's just, uh, I was kind of thinking, you know, like uh, expensive cars. And this this thing outclasses any car I've ever seen just in the sheer craftsmanship and quality of the thing. I mean, everything just works so smooth, except uh, I let this one sit too long sometimes, and it gets hard to shift uh, back into English threads when I'm cutting uh, metric threads. But what, what you do is put the... Uh, uh, before you, every time before you thread, is put the gearbox into a, a high feed and, uh, excuse me, and, and then run it with the gearbox spinning real fast and then it'll splash lube everything in there. Then it shifts just quick. I forget to do stuff um, uh, like that all the time or think, well, I didn't use it too long ago. I don't need to do it. But you just need to, um, you know, uh, uh, use the machine a little bit more probably than I do. I kind of saved this machine here for uh, um, special things that I need. And that's kind of an interesting thing. A, a guy commented on, on the channel that uh, he w worked for um, an aerospace company and made... Uh, um, parts for gauges and fixtures. And that's the kind of thing that I used it for in my business over the years. I had it uh, not actually uh, making parts for customers directly, but some. You know, make a lot of adapters, uh, you know, English to metric and st stuff like that because it's just so easy and quick to do on this machine. I don't think there's any machine that it's easy to do than the Monarch 10 double E inch metric. I, I just don't think so. But uh, what I used it for that really improved my uh, business overall was uh, making fixtures. And uh, there's a lot of times I was working on the, the same thing, the same kind of engine or power transfer cases or something like that. It was really beneficial to make a fixture so I could do them faster if I was doing a lot of them. And that's where this uh, 10 double uh, E came in for me. And it sounds like it still uh, plays a role in the industry on that kind of thing. You know, it's just kind of easier to make a, a single precision part for a fixture, a gauge or something like that on a, on a, a high quality machine like this than try to program it out on a CNC, at least so far, until they get artificial intelligence going, I guess. Okay, so... It's sort of like everything on the machine just fits good, works good. The, the uh, electric uh, lead screw reverse on these is really quite a mechanical thing. And uh, uh, it, it actually works pretty good. And uh, it, it's kind of a marvel in itself. <laughs> but I don't know. But over here, it's kind of interesting. Um, the uh, it's not you know the uh, electrical on this kind of scares people quite a bit, and uh, this is some kind of interesting things here. Well, it talks about uh, being very careful with the voltage because with the uh, step up uh, transformer, uh, you get as voltage as high as five hundred and seventy five volts so you really want to be careful and uh you know just just take your time and don't you know get shocked um oh this is it right here i like this and and this is this is what it is it takes but little time to replace or repair an electric 
electrical or electronic part. The electronic parts would be in the left-hand compartment and the electrical parts uh, will be in the right-hand compartment. Now, now, get this. Unfortunately, too much time is spent in finding the part that is at fault. A considerable amount of lost time can be eliminated if the electrician, that's you, will follow a few rules <laughs> as follows. Inquire of the machine operator. That's you too. Okay. <laughs> What is the trouble with the machine? The electrician is not familiar with the machine operation. He should study the schematic uh, diagram included in this manual and go through the sequence of operation with the machine operator. Some time is spent studying the schematic diagram should, should make it possible for the electrician to observe in what part of the circuit the trouble lies. And uh, for example, assume the operator states the lathe spindle is coasting instead of breaking when he moves the control lever, lever to the off position. The electrician not being familiar with the machine does not know what type of braking is used. He therefore refers to the schematic diagram and notes immediately that the machine is powered by a shunt wound DC motor and that dynamic braking is employed. He can now see that there may be one of three things that is causing the trouble. The dynamic brake resistors are open, the contacts placed in the resistors across the armature are not making contact or contacts uh, that place uh, a, a full field on the motor by short-circuiting the field control potentiometer are not making contact. Now with an ohmmeter, he can check for continuity and, and which of the three possibilities is, is at fault. And the sequence of op operations is, is really cool. And it, st it starts here. This entire page here, it starts when the disconnect switch is placed in the on position. And uh, it, it's pretty cool. And what happens when you throw a lever and all that. And uh, I, I think it ends, maybe it ends right here. Yeah, that's it, right. <laughs> right there. Okay. But it, it's really... Uh, not that hard to figure these things out on this on on um, the uh, 1960 to uh, 1983 um, vacuum tube machines anyway, because uh, when you become uh, familiar with the operation of the machine, um, the uh, something going wrong, you can go right to the circuit. And uh, let's see, well, I'll flip over, maybe I went too far here. Here, this is right after the sequence of operations. And it shows the controls here. Here's like rectifier one, rectifier two, and uh, so on uh, with the, um, uh, that consists of 14 diodes uh, in the module. And so, it, if it's not braking, if, if it's, uh, you know, not holding steady speed or just weird stuff, it's actually pretty easy to find where the circuit is. And uh, it, it's kind of uh, uh, pretty easy uh, with the relays and, and, and this sort of thing. Uh, the... Uh, uh, in the control here, it, these are uh, uh, full and half-way uh, rectifiers made out of um, um, diodes. So, okay. That, that's kind of how that is. And, you know, you'll get used to it when you buy one of these. <laughs> it's not... It's not.
<laughs> it's not too bad. There's a lot of little things. Some uh, 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 people that were uh, really pretty smart uh, that uh, I can pass on that that have told me about some of these uh, some of these functions. Now the uh, this uh, this is kind of a cool brochure. This is uh, for a 1984. Uh, full electronic uh, machine. It would be brand new when this uh, when I pick this um, brochure up. Let's see if I can get it with a glare of that or something. Maybe I can set it more down here. Something like that. You can see, see the beautiful blue waves. And uh, it's uh, an interesting uh, things that they say here. And of course, uh, Monarch's reputation for excellence is clearly reflected in the model EE 10 inch precision toolmaker's lathe, a tool so precise, sensitive, and durable that has become the standard which all others are compared, and that's a fact. Whether you like this machine or not, it's the standard by which all others are compared. <laughs> now, the, the, the interesting thing about this is uh, they talk here, and the vacuum tube uh, machine works the same. It says, one of the major reasons the EE is still the best lathe you can buy is the fact that Monarch has con continually made design improvements that either improve performance or durability. And you know, they talk about the new um, solid state drive. And uh, it's just, uh, uh, They put the main drive motor, 5 horsepower, 3.7 kilowatt precision balance motor provide, uh, provide smooth, effortless power. And I'll tell you what, this, uh, this machine here has uh, an extremely smooth running uh, 5 horsepower uh, direct current motor. Now, the newer machines here... Um, that they make now have a um, VFD or type drive in it, but it, but it's not like an off-the-shelf VFD. I I had the pleasure of, of trying one out. <laughs> I can't tell you where because I wasn't supposed to be there, and uh, it's just a it is a great runner deal. And, and what I mean by uh, not an off-the-shelf BFD, it's like it, it, it's got boxes and switches that are, uh, are fairly large and industrial. You know, the little VFD drives have little tiny switches and stuff inside. I don't know what's in there. Oh, it shows uh, some of the accessories and stuff. This is a pretty neat uh, old book here, or brochure. Ah, spindle rotational accuracy is 30 millionths of an inch. Axial runout, 30 millionths of an inch. Uh, there's another kind of thing here I wanted to point out I was talking uh, to the blade about. Headstock alignment. And uh, I don't know if they're, if they mention the concave, how much concave that uh, it'll face. But that's an important thing on these machines. Anyway, I don't know if, you, if I can hold that, you can enlarge that and look at these. Uh, specs on this machine. Okay. So, I just wanted to point out that um, 
these are really uh, special machines here and uh, really should be uh, preserved and uh, the uh, blade uh, let me know that uh, Monarch does have parts so you don't have to go and uh, and, and go the stupid route like these uh, idiots are doing on the internet, including YouTube, you know. But they got these versions of these replacement drug current drives. And over the years, uh, people have found that uh, uh, a five horsepower VFD will work pretty good. And they get these uh, VFD uh, rated motors and then uh, make an adapter uh, for the back here seem to work pretty good. Seem to do an okay job. But uh, I just thought that uh, you might like to see some of this and uh, hopefully kind of get a little bit of an understanding of the machine. I'm going to go through uh, some of the, the stuff that I have and show how to change the voltage on it. Make it easier for people that get one. And often they're wired for a high voltage. Okay, I'm going to check out. I've got a couple things to do here. And uh, I'm, I'm going to try to try to fix that press outside too. So uh, I'll be using this machine to cut the... Uh, um, acne threaded sleeve uh, I need. Okay. Until later.